Hi, ladies. So sorry about that. I all day, I thought today was Monday. I apologize because I'm even like, I'm ready to go. And like, I know what my topic is this week. I'm ready to roll. And I'm going, yep, tomorrow I'll post it in the morning. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and like, I don't know what it is. Since I got goofed up at school, my head is on my butt. I can't figure it out. So I apologize. So thank you for your patience. So tonight's topic is how to have a banging virtual party. So I know you girls are familiar with virtual parties, but I wanted to go over some of the main things and just the, the steps of it because I thought this would be a great recording for everybody as they're new and getting started. It's one that we could send people to refer to then as they join our teams or just getting started themselves or need a refresher. So first things first is, to have an amazing virtual party, you want to make sure that you are um, starting out with prepping your host to help them to understand how many people they need to invite to the party. One of the things I've noticed with Facebook, and since our we've had so many changes since August 1st, um, I found that I, my best parties are ranging between 45 to 90 people. I'm finding that if they're below 45, in the 40 range, they're okay. But below that, they're not qualifying or you're having to work super hard. That's not the point of this. So the way I always look at it is when I train people for home shows, I host coach and tell them I need 40 guest list names because that means about 10, 10 to 15 people are going to show up that day and place orders. So realistically, our mindset has to be the exact same for a virtual party. It's no different. It really is no different. So we need to coach them to have 40 or more people. The other thing is I'm finding is that some people are click happy and they invite 327 or they have 200 people. And what I'm finding is it takes away the intimacy of the party. And now it's just, you're a number in the party and it's not as personal. And I think what's happening is people are looking at this one. Eh, they have enough people to order. I don't need anything right now. The other thing is, is with the host coaching right from the get go, I am starting now to create and pick collage app. I am creating a, just a very generic invitation that says, Hey, I'm having a Facebook party. Please join. And then I'm having them, I'm putting in their Facebook name um, of the group. Like I'm creating this. So I'm putting up the party group's name and the link to the party. So that way they could then text it to people. They could send it on messenger to people. And I'm finding that the people that my hosts that legitimately are doing this are getting more people to click that they're attending. If you are on a laptop, I believe if you click on members, the add member section, there's an area you can look at, or maybe it's on the phone. I forget. No, I think it's on my phone. Let me pull it up. But I'm pretty sure that when you click on the party, add members um, to the group, like you're going to add. Yes, it is you're gonna see a section that says invited. And I know you probably can't see this from, well, maybe you can from my phone a little bit without the glare. If you see this, you'll see members are the ones that have added and they, they click that they're coming to the party basically. If it says invited, it means we invited them and they're only observing the party, they can't comment. Well, our goal is, is to get them commenting. So you get one chance as an administrator to click and then what it lets you do is, I'm not sure if you can see this again, but there's, oh, let me see. There's an option. It says, it's the second tab. It says send reminder. That gives you, you can send one reminder per party. So I start to add my host as an administrator also, so that if I'm too busy to sit and click these people, let them do it. It's their party. So I just am giving them the little tip. I created in my notes on my phone, so I just copy and paste it to all of my hosts. Hey. On your party, if you're logging in on your phone, make sure that when you click on add members, check the invited section. Those are the people that have not clicked that they're joining us yet. So send out a reminder. You can write, you can click on that, send reminder, and then this gives them an opportunity to still join us. So I'm kind of putting, trying to put it back on my house. Now, if I do have a party that invites a whopping 16 people, even though I coach them all in every way possible, because you're going to have those people that are just know everything even though we do this um then i will go through and click to try to get those people but i'm not beating it with a dead i mean it's a dead horse if i can't get it to qualify i'm not working harder than my house it just isn't happening so that's why when i do virtual parties i load up on extra parties 
If my plan is to do four this month, I'm booking double, I'm booking eight. Because two virtuals are the same as usually one cooking show. And honestly, I mean, there's times I've been going out lately and I'll be honest, some of my virtuals are rocking way more. So these are the beginning steps to get your, to start coaching your host. So setting the number, sending a personal invitation to them, and then reminding them to get people at it. I personally start on a Sunday morning, set up all my groups, and then they have all day Sunday. So then that way, as they're adding people Sunday, I'm also kind of seeing what they're doing. I'm also reminding them, I'm coaching them at that point, you know, hey, don't forget, send that invite that I sent you, send it out to everybody. And then, of course, anybody I send it to, even if they don't join the group, they still have the party link, which they still may order. Um, so that's the beginning steps of the host coaching. The next thing that I do to rock a virtual party is, of course, my outline. So how do you make an awesome outline? Your personality needs to show in your outline. It's great and wonderful when we share outlines, but people need to get to know you and your personality. And anybody that knows me knows I'm a complete nut job. So I'm there for pure entertainment purposes. So my posts are funny. I do stupid things, you know? The other day in my virtual party, which I'll share with you, it's a little chubby girl eating pasta. And she goes, I pasta out. Like she was passed out. And then I showed the pasta maker. So like I find corny, funny pictures. And then I add words to them and make it my own. And just to make people laugh in a show, you know? things that catch their attention. You want to have posts that are engaging and interactive, especially the first day. You want to do a lot of your introductory per posts the first day. You know, telling them about the host specials, telling them about the guest special. Even if it's the last week of the month and you post the host special, somebody might still like that month special and they'll book immediately. So it's okay to do that. Entice them. Host specials, guest specials, um, you know, it, Posts showing the guest special, like how it's being used, do a little video or a demo of it live. Um, engaging posts. One of my posts that I'm doing right now on the first day is what, what job should you really have? And it's like those funny ones. And it's like if they match their birthday month with the date and it tells you what job you should have. So I have in the post, um, tell me what your real job is. So then I, I'm scoping out my recruit leads. You know, I know which ones are going to be those potentials. And then what their job should be based on this chart. And it's like a wicked, um, they might be a wicked paramedic or they might be like just corny, silly things. Well, that post blew up. My one party had like 46 people comment on it. So I'm like, hey, I got their attention in the first couple hours. Now I got to keep it. So I'm always the first day is a lot of engagement stuff. Um, and then of course your outline is up to you and your personality. You want to make sure you're posting videos. Um, whether it be demo videos of the company doing things, I personally will try as much as I can to post videos of myself doing things. Um, just because they, I think that people connect more when it's real. Um, and anybody that knows me can tell you there's times my kids are in the background. There's times their kids are screaming and there's times I have my pajama bottoms on and I'm just rocking. And I don't care. So, you know, don't be afraid to be real because that's what people are going to connect to going, wow, she is sitting in her kitchen in her pajamas and she is whipping up her pasta for dinner for kids because it's a rainy night. You know, you're going to connect to that. It's not a big deal. Um, the other thing is, is you want to make sure that you're, you're varying your posts. So it's not constant pictures. People can look at a picture that doesn't always sell it. That solidifies the deal. You know, they want to hear it. The more you're doing live videos, little demos, Tape yourself doing them. Don't go live. Videotape a two minute on the food chopper. Videotape yourself doing the raw cook for five minutes. Video create all of those videos, put them in YouTube, and now you're using them for all the parties, but it's you personally doing them, not Tim, the guy from Pamper Chef Home Office that nobody even knows who he is. Okay? Even though, I mean, I know him, but you, not, they're not going to. They're going to connect more with you as a host, um, as a consultant. The other thing is, is making sure I don't play games. I do engaging posts and I do a participation award way easier than counting points, way easier than dealing with points. I just do that. At the end of the party, I look at who participated the most. And if I comes down to it, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll give two prizes away. Citrus peelers, dollar or two dollar. I am seasoned best. I don't go hog wild with prizes. My goal is always to make it less than five dollars. If I have a host, that's, if I have somebody that spends maybe two or three hundred dollars, well, then they might get a $6 item, you know, by themselves if they're my winner or a $10 item, because I feel that that's 
you know, substantial and that's, you know, worthy of that, you know, especially because they spent that amount and they're participating. Um, so just really making sure that you're creating an outline that's exciting for your customers. If you're not excited to see that, then don't post it because you're going to lose them in the show and you're going to lose them the more days you go on. Three to five days, cut it off after that because what's happening is, is you're going to lose them. I stick with five days and I'll tell you the only reason I stick with five is because I hit a paycheck day. I find that if I was doing the three days, if I, it's hard for me to start shows on Wednesdays. So if I were to start posting and go Wednesday to Friday, Wednesday to Saturday, I just find Fridays and Saturdays aren't engaging. I do find Mondays are super duper engaging and that's what worked for me. And Fridays because the paycheck. So I stay on a five day stretch right now. You got to see what works for you and talk to your host. Your host knows your, their guests. So maybe have a three day outline and a five day outline and then use whatever your host would prefer at that time. I have posts that will ask me to do two week ones. And I tell them, but I don't know. I'm like, nope, sorry. It's too long I'm, and I'm going to lose your gas. I want to keep this engaging. And most people are going to order. You have to realize they're not going to order from your parties until probably the last 24 to 48 hours. And usually 24 to 48 hours after the party is supposed to close. So I stop my parties Friday nights. Once in a while, if I have to wrap up something on a Saturday, um, I do. And then I try to close out Sunday or Monday. But honestly, a lot of orders come in even after the fact. So I always know hold it for another 24 hours at least and then check with the host and then have the host go back and check with anybody that was participating or that they thought might order. So just like a home show. Um, the other thing is when you're doing your outline, you want to, I personally do it every two to three hours, my post. If you go every hour, sometimes it gets to be too much. If you go five hours apart, you know, try to gauge it when people are on Facebook. They're on the Facebook between seven, uh, six and seven a.m. They're getting up for work. They're on. Sometimes they have a morning break, you know, nine o'clock. They might have a lunch break at noon. They have, you know, the kids are getting out of school and now, you know, maybe they are done work at four o'clock. Then they have dinner. So six, seven o'clock. You know, all of my booking and all my recruiting posts are always at night. Right now, I have three possible recruit leads just from my shows the past couple of days. And I post at night. I try to post a video of, about recruiting. Um, sometimes I try to go live. I don't always, cause it just depends on my life. Um, but if I can, I try to go live. Um, I, I just try to post engaging. What's the, the consultant special right now? The quick cooker is banging. If you don't own the quick cooker, get one immediately. You throw your own party, use your 60% off this month, you know, just do what you need to do to get it. Because I, I got 11 bookings in the past week, just from the quick cooker for people that want the quick cooker. Show it. I made a roast last night for Frozen to finish in 80 minutes. It wasn't full apart, but it, I didn't dry it out because I didn't. I wanted it for today. I literally threw it back in my quick cooker for five minutes, and I'm so mad. I should have made a video, but I just was busy today. I threw it back in the quick cooker, and it all fell apart. So I'm like, so I prepped it yesterday, Frozen to finish, threw it in for five minutes on custom setting, and it fell apart today for dinner, and I warmed it for five minutes. I mean, this is a major game changer in people's lives, and going live with that product versus showing the picture is going to sell it and book your parties. And it's going to get recruits, especially right now, because that's what the recruiting special is. Um, it's a blessing. Trust me. And that thing is the bomb. I don't care what anybody says. I might get a second one so I can make extra food because it's awesome. So we have a great product. So utilize that. I right now in my outline, I do an entire day, which is Wednesday, all on the quick cooker. That's all I'm doing. A full day is on the quick cooker. I'm showing how it works. I'm showing the demo video from the company. I'm showing images of all different things you can make. I'm doing a video clip live and either I go live or I pull a video that I made already. And if I go live on Facebook, you could save all those videos and transfer them to YouTube. So all the videos, every time I go live, I have all those now to use for the quick cooker. So I'm, I'm adding those to my outline for that day. I'm showing about the consultant special to get it for 20, you know, that you can get it for free when you qualify. I'm showing how in October they can grab it for $96. So I'm enticing them to want that. And I spend an entire day. And by the time that they're done, they're in their mind, they're already thinking of all their meals that they can make in it. So now it's becoming a need, not a want. So it's becoming a necessity in their household. If I just did one picture and one video, it's not going to have the same effect. So that's why I'm doing a full day on just that. Um, you want to show in your virtual parties, your top dollar products. And by top dollar, it does not mean a citrus peeler. Okay. A brownie pan, get rid of it. 
Brownie pans will sell themselves. The food chopper's been out for like 25 years. It will sell itself. You need to sell rock crocs, grill pans, griddles. Show the features of how the griddles nest inside of the, the grill pan. Show uh, the million ways to use that grill pan. I mean, that could be in a day. That grill pan is also the bomb. So same with the rock crocs. Showing those. Going live and doing a quick demo video of those. Um, the new pans. So what I would suggest doing, I mean, we have a lot of baking pans this season. Bundle package it. It's not sold as bundles, but you can bundle it and give them a 2 or $3 discount. Give them the waffle maker with the pancake maker and the scraper and give them a, figure out what they all cost and deduct three bucks and call it the bundle baking set. Those packages are, then that way you're not showing a little item, you're cross-selling package deals to make your sales higher versus just showing a pan for $25, okay? So that's very important. These are the little things you can do. And the best thing, number one, is selling you to your party. You have to interact. You must engage. You must private message. You must engage and make it silly, make it funny. You know, go call people out. Like, I'm a, I am a shady character, I guess. But, like, if somebody's doing something or saying something silly, I keep calling them out. You know, we make it fun. Just like if it were a home show and somebody said something goofy, you know, I call them out on the party and kind of tease them, you know. Then that's when they're having fun. I tag people by names. So if somebody, um, Shirley, she's on the party and she keeps posting, I'm like, wow, Shirley, you are just a little go-getter. You go, you go, girl. And then I put up like one of my emoji cons or whatever those things are with my baker's hat on. And I call her out on things. So just making it fun and interactive and letting your personality shine. Going live at some point, whether it's two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, you need to go live and let people connect to you because if they don't connect to you, they're not going to want to buy from you and they're not going to continue to work with you. So connect to them. And then um, at the end, making sure, oh, actually, let me back up. I apologize. Let me back up. So the host coaching, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. Host coaching is not done the first day and then it stops. You are host coaching every single day, every day. I used to always send them picture and I used to send words. Now I made pre-recorded videos. I send the video and I send the images. So it's, here's my video for two or three minutes. They're all, my first video I think is three minutes. The rest are a minute or less. And it's just little tips every day. First day is having them add their guests. Then I send them one about having them add a recipe and share about the recipes. Every day in my video, I remind them that they must tag people and they must make it interactive and have conversations. I tell them to treat it like a home party making sure that they're talking and chatting it up. As the week goes on, I'm telling them to share a recipe. I'm challenging them to go live in their virtual party. I'm challenging them to share their wish list items or their favorite items. And then by the end, I'm challenging them to tag everybody that, should, that would be awesome hosts and awesome consultants. So then that way it's coming from them and then more people are enticed. I never walk away from a Pampered Chef virtual party if it qualifies without two to five bookings. That's always my goal. My parties this past week, I got five bookings from one show. And I know Miss Connie got five bookings from one show. So if you don't ask, you don't get bookings, okay? They're not going to chase you down. It's not like you're the ice cream truck and the bell's ringing and now everybody's running because they need their ice cream with sprinkles, okay? That's not how it is in this business. You got to make personal connections. You got to talk to everybody. At the end of my party, so once I did all this, of course, I'm going to host coach my coach or my host to now know how to close the party. I don't want to work harder. I want to work smarter. So I send them the image the whole way, like in the beginning of the party. And then at the end, again, I remind them how to log in. I let them know they can go in and plug in their own orders. This way, they'll see their wonderful rewards and they can play with it. And all it does is keeps me off the phone for two hours because somebody's contemplating. I don't know what I want. I think I want the brownie band for 20 bucks. And I think I want this. And... Nope, I got two kids. I don't have time to sit for you to figure out your orders. So what I tell them is I want you to go in. This is so exciting. You get to go in and you get to play with your order. And I promise I am going to double check your order and make sure we got you the best deals. But I want you the opportunity to see it on your end so you can play with it because I don't want to spend my, your money for you. We make no commission off their orders so they can pick whatever they want. I want them to be happy, so I'm going to get them the best deal because I want them to come back to me. 
but I'm not worried about making sure, um, you know, that I save them 62 cents because we sat on the phone for three hours. I want them to work on it and then I'm going to be able to pick up and look and make sure that their order is the cheapest, but it's going to take me two or three minutes to review. I screenshot it. I send it to my house. Is this, I just want to verify, is this what your order looked like? Is this the price that you got on your end? Great. Okay, so Sally, I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to close up your party. And then I print off Sally's, um, the summary sheet. I, I don't know if you could see it, but print off my summary sheet. I draw three lines on it, first, second, third. And I keep track of every time I call them. I send every single person a personal text. I'm a little behind. I'm not going to lie. I went back to school. So I have, that's my goal now because I want to keep going. So I just go back wherever I left off. I pick up with that party and I reach out and send a thank you message. I check in. Did you like your pies? Here's a great recipe. They bought a rock cock. I email them a rock cock cookbook. You know, if they bought the snack bar maker, um, I might then at that point with the snack bar maker, I might say, hey, I know this you didn't order it this time. The, the bar or the batter bowl would be a really great thing for you to add next time or, you know. You can make homemade oatmeal bars, then you can warm it in the, right in the microwave. And then I might send them the recipes from the PC link, give them a couple recipes. Reaching out to them after the fact is the best customer service you're going to do for these people. And after you have a little conversation going, it's your opportunity to get them to book a party or join your team. Ask them to join your team first. You know, you're talking, you'll give them the hint about the batter bowl. You know what? I also want to give you a couple recipes. You can make chocolate chip bars. You can make, um, you can make your own candy bars with whatever toppings. Um, and then blah, 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 blah. And then it says, you know what? One last thing I want to share with you because I would just beat myself up if I couldn't tell you this. We have a phenomenal deal right now. If you join, you can join this month for $29. $29 is cheaper than filling your gas tank. And from doing that, this could completely change your life. And, you know, I know you would draw in that quick cooker. How about if I help you get your first four parties started? We're going to work to get you that quick cooker really fast, okay? And if they tell you no, be like, you know what? I'm just curious why. And then when they say, they'll tell you why. If they still continuously say no, then you, that's when your opportunity is to ask them to book a party, okay? Early on, it's not always easy. You're starting with, um, you know, especially when you're first starting with the virtual, the virtual world. You're starting with a blank slate, but you have to remember, we all started in the same spot. Every month, I got to go to work to get my bookings. If I slack off, the booking fairy didn't show up and drop them off like the tooth fairy does. I got to go back to work. So every month, I could potentially have the same blank slate as anybody that just starts the business. So the go-getters and the people that want to make the business work, you have to put yourself out there in a position where you're going to go out of your comfort zone. You're going to go live doing videos, live videos. One of the things is I learned recently is when you go and do a live video, ask everybody to share it when you're talking on the video. Say it a couple times because the more that they keep sharing it, the more your name's going to spread and the more you're going to get out there. And now it's popping up on different news feeds. So asking them, you know, as you're doing it, hey, don't forget, share my video. That way we can help everybody learn how the stack maker's so awesome, you know, things like that. But you have to be the one to make the business work. Anybody can come in and sign up to do this business. It's a matter of going out there, getting your contacts. Um, now, I know in the fall, we have a fall retreat coming up. Not everybody was able to register, but Laura Polito is one of the ladies in Pamper Check, and she is constantly out and about. The other day, I had a laugh because I'm obviously friends with her. She, was up, she lives in upstate New York, and she got her picture taken with a police officer. <laughs> And he was going to buy a stone pan. So she literally like worked in a conversation when she ran into a cop she didn't even know, worked it in that she's a pamper chef lady. And the, the cop said, oh, my ex-wife took my bar pan and um, I think I need, I need a new pizza stone or whatever it was. And she gave him her, um, her information, gave him a book, you know, blah, blah, blah. You are out and about. You don't need to know anybody to start this business. I had nobody in the family support me when I started. I had nobody in my coworkers that helped me start it. I went out. I, I talked it up with people. I did live videos even when I thought I was stupid and I, I sounded ridiculous. Um, I asked people to share my name. When you get, it takes one good party. That's all it takes. And you can get two parties. And then from each of those parties, you get two parties. 
And that's all it takes is that consistency. Virtual, like I said, you've got, you're going to have, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. It's going to be peaks and valleys. We hit a roadblock in August. You know, Facebook made changes on us. I'm not going to lie. It's, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We hit this roadblock once a year. Facebook tries to stop us. They kind of do some little tweaking. Now we got to add the app for SynthShare. It's an extra step. It's the biggest pain in the ass for me because I got to do it on my laptop. My internet barely works lately for where I live. For some reason, the stupid internet company sucks. So I could not do any of my apps. Add it last night to my virtual parties. It drove me freaking bonkers. Did I quit? No. Got back on the horse. As soon as I'm done this call, I'm going to add those apps tonight because my internet's working tonight. The point is, we all are going to have roadblocks, but if you had a full-time, any full-time job you have, they, things change at your jobs. If you're in retail, they change things in the retail world. If you're a teacher and you work in education, they change things. If you're in the health field, they change laws. We have to, we're always in change. This is what life is, it's change. So when we hit a roadblock in Facebook land, we hit the roadblock, it's change, we jump, we get over it, we work together. The difference with Camper Jeff's roadblocks is we work together as a team and we help each other figure out the roadblocks and how can we overcome them. Now, I was a little disappointed. August sales did not go as planned for my virtuals, not like my July. So I was a little bummed, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, what the hell is going on with this? You know, I got myself on, got myself on track this month. I'm like, I'm doing the virtual parties. I'm doing my host coaching. Right this past week, I had nine parties that just were, well, I'm wrapping them up. I'm closing two more tonight, but nine parties as of tonight will close from last week. Out of the nine parties, everybody qualified. The lowest party I had hit 201, but we qualified. And that's the point. I had two parties that are in the 800s. I have a party that's 1100. Um, I have to look what the other ones are. I think I had a 500 and something else, but they all are qualified. My point is, they are not always going to be rock stars. They're going to fall between 200 and 1500 for virtuals. If you're lucky, they're fluky. I'm not going to lie to you, but they are possible. So what it told me though, is we're getting on the right track because my sales were better in the virtual parties this month than they were last month. Could August have just been a bad month because everybody's busy with school going back for all their kids. People's lives are crazy. Absolutely. It could have just been that month. September's looking way better for me sales-wise for virtuals. And I have another batch that actually started this week and I have another batch going next week now. So the point is, if your parties are not qualifying, you're doing your host coaching, book another batch a couple of a couple. So if you do four this week, you can start a virtual party anytime. So it doesn't mean because I'm like, well, I booked my virtual parties for September because I booked them September 15th and I'm done by the 20th. September 30th at 1 a.m. Central Time is when we are done our business. So you could start a party September 29th and do it for 24 hours and close it September 30th. It's possible. So if you want it that bad enough, make it happen. It's all up to you. But potentially, if your first four parties don't go well, or first six or eight or however many you do, book another set of them and book another set. And what's going to happen is, even if they don't qualify, your job is still to reach out to the customers that ordered or participated. Because this host may have sucked. Then, but you might get somebody from that party that will host and be awesome. So you can never prejudge. And just because a party doesn't qualify doesn't mean you write those people off. Okay. So these are my tips to have a successful virtual party. Hopefully they were helpful. And I'll open it up for any questions that you have, ladies. It's the awkward silence at all, all the time at this time. I think Connie's turning around to yell at her husband. No, I'm at work. Oh, you're, oh, you're just yelling at the men there. <laughs> Anybody have any questions, girls? Yeah. Connie, you're always doing virtual parties. Did you learn anything new? I started using the outlines from the company and they were, they've been working for me. So I've kind of been sticking with them right now. Great. Share that on our team page. Cause I'm not going to lie to you. I, I have like an ADHD issue or something. I, I can't work with those ones. I don't know what my problem is. I don't, it's not that I don't think they're, they're good. It's just not my personality. Yeah. 
So that's what is hard for me. But definitely as a new consultant, run with those if they work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, share that on the team page about using those um, outlines. And even any that you use that you thought were awesome, share those even as well. Emily, do you have any questions? Um, not really at the moment, but it did help me a lot though. Did it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I had, yeah. um, go ahead. No, you go. I had my first four parties this week and unfortunately none of them qualified. Um, I still have two going on, but I'm not sure if they're going to qualify. Um, okay. So, so what do you think was your setback that they didn't qualify? What area do you think maybe was not right in place yet? Um, probably the, po the posts, obviously. I didn't do any live videos. Um, I don't have a whole bunch of products yet. Um, so that's kind of my downfall at the moment. It's okay. What products do you have? Which kit did you get? Um, unfortunately, I just got the one for $29. That's okay. Um, so, I mean, it came with a lot of good stuff, but unfortunately no products. Did you, so which products do you own? Do you own certain products yet? I have the, um, I think it's the bar maker with there the you go. spatula, which you were talking about. Um, go live with the bar pan, show them all the different fall recipes they could do on a bar pan. Show them okay. one pan meals for busy dinners. So show them how they could do pork chops and sweet potatoes and apples. And now they have a whole meal. Show them how they could do brownies with, um, nuts on top of them and caramel. Show them how they can take it and they can make cho a chocolate chip cookie pizza on it. You know, don't be afraid and think of a lot of different versatile, ide versatile ideas. You know, even having them tell them, you know, hey, I bet you a lot of you didn't know you could freeze your bar pan and make cold stone creamery ice cream on it. So I didn't know that. <laughs> there you go. See, there's a tip for you. So take what you have and make people want it. You don't have to uh -huh. own a ton to get started. Now, did you set up your own launch party to do? Um, I am starting that next Monday. Okay, good. Okay. Yes. And what I would recommend is, I'm not sure if you're at the capability, but are you able to do a home launch party as well? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I just read about I just, that. Yeah, I just moved um, up to this area in March around Reading. Um, so a lot of people that I know are down like Lancaster, Harrisburg area. So it might so, be harder for them to travel then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's about an hour up here. So yeah. So, and yeah. I totally get that. So run with your virtual launch party. Okay. Um, and what I would do is definitely go live, reach out to them personally. You know, obviously you don't need to host coach yourself, but making sure you're diligent daily to be very involved, tagging people, sending the link to them to remind them is very important to do. Um, but what I would recommend doing is do your launch party bust your butt to get as many sales as you can because then you're the host to that party so it gets you more products right the other thing is is if you are local enough to any of other the consultants on our team um if you see nikki since you signed up with nikki borrow products we borrow from each other we help each other out so don't be afraid to ask them hey can i borrow this to make a video and then once you save that video you have it to use so it doesn't mean you need to go live Save the video because when they see you doing it, it's going to be more meaningful to the, the, the customers. Okay. Now, um, how were your hosts interacting on the shows? Were they interactive or not really? Um, two of them kind of were. The one really was. The other one, sometimes. The other two, not at all. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I did tell them, you know, to try to, you know, tag people and whatnot, but they they kind of just lost interest of it. Yeah. So what your goal now is though, is what you got to do is say, you know what? Bless and release. I got to move on. And now you need to go out and find four people, but don't stop at four. Make a list of 40 people that you know right now. And you're going to message all 40 of those people or call all 40. It sounds crazy, but that we call it the Frank's list. So if you start with those people, your friends, your relatives, um, your any associations that you have, your neighbors, if this is a great time, if you just moved to the area, get to know your neighbors, go right. out, talk to them, stick a pamphlet, you know, hey, I just started selling Pampered Chef, I'd love for us to get together sometime and chat about it, or here's a catalog, ask them to share your name, um, coworkers, you, if, um, anybody that has kids that you know, 
because we have a kids cooking line, people that cook with their children. It can give them memories, spousal connections, or if you're a significant other, um, you know, those are connections. Make a whole list of 40 people and message all of them. The statistic okay. is for every 10 people you message, you'll normally get one booking. So if you message 40, chances are you're going to get 40 bookings. The other thing is, is not all 40 people are obviously going to say yes. You're going to hear the word no, and that's okay. So you have two things. When you hear the word no, some of them will just say no for right now. And then you've now planted a seed in their mind. So now they might start thinking about it. There's times I ask people in a couple weeks later, they're like, you know what? I do want to do a show. I actually was at the store tonight and I had a girl that deleted Facebook and she went MIA the day we were supposed to do her part. I'm like, where the hell did she go? So I texted her because she wasn't answering me. And I'm like, you know what? She owes me the respect at least to answer me. So I called her, left a message, didn't hear from her. I gave it a 24 hours and I texted her. I said, look, I'm not trying to be a pain, but I'm, I want to uphold my commitment to you. I don't know where you went on Facebook. We have this party schedule. You know, what's going on? Is something wrong? Did I do something? You know, what can I do? She messaged me back that she had, a, she just needed a break from Facebook. It was just a, not a good timing. Now that was two months ago. I got a message from her tonight that says, hey, I'm back on Facebook. I'm ready to do my party. You know, so when you plant seeds and you, you know, people cancel, don't let them cancel, let them reschedule. You know, it's all in our word choice and how we talk to people. Somebody says no to you, ask them why. You know, sometimes people might say, you know, a lot of times if you ask them to do a party in a woman's mind right now, like I know in my mind, I'm going, I need to pack lunches. I need to iron Brody's school clothes. I need to finish closing my shows out tonight. I need to grade my papers for the math, my math test that I had today in school with my kids. Like I have 90 things in my mind. And then, so that's what the woman's brain does. And then sometimes the man's is like, I got to wake up and eat. <laughs> you know, we have a whole different perspective, you know? So when you're asking somebody and it's a woman to book a party, they're going, duh, 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 duh. I can't go to a party right now. So your job is to say, well, why can't you do a party right now? You know, what are, what are reasons? Don't let them off the hook with no. And then when they'll say, I am just too busy right now. And you say, girlfriend, that is fine. I am so busy right now myself. How does next month sound? So even if I'm not currently busy, if I knew they were saying no to me right now, I'm not trying to talk them into doing a party to, in 24 hours. So I just leave them off the hook and say, oh my God, thank God, girlfriend. I am busy too. How's next month? Because now I'm still getting them on my calendar most likely. Or I'll book them. You know, even if I'm booking them right now in January, it's not my ideal situation. But once they book, it's not common for people to cancel often because they'll hold that date, especially if you remind them of the date. You know, hey, just checking in. I, I have a schedule for January. Da, 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 da. You know, you might throw them in November. In November, hey, my calendar's feeling really filling up a lot. I just don't want to give. Um, I don't want to have your date in there. You need to reschedule because I have so many people wanting to do parties. Are we still good for this date? I don't care if nobody wants to have a party with you. You're always busy. You're always busy. And oh my god, my calendar is so full. I just am confirming us because I have so many people on a wait list right now. Because people will do business with busy people. If you're out there with on the island of desperation going, hey, help me, hey, me, have a party, please, somebody, you're not getting business. So always be busy even when you're not. They don't need to know that. Right. Okay. Okay. I will work on that. Yes, I challenge you to get yourself four more bookings. And okay. there's no rules. Start it as soon as you get four. Set a date and start them because we want to get you qualified in that, that 90 day. Well, in 30 days, we want to get to your quick cooker. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to pay for that thing. You need to get your butt moving with those parties. <laughs> right. I do have a question about that. Sure. Um, the 12, is it 1250 that you have to get in 30 days? Yes. Um, if you don't get that, you're not qualified. Is that what I understand? Okay. You have 90 days to qualify. 30 um, gets you the bonus of the quick cooker. So after uh, the 30 days, you'll still get, what happens is, is every time you hit 12.50 in 90 days, the company will hand you 100 pamper chef dollars. So on top of you qualifying, if you do it in 30 days, you're going to get 100 pamper chef dollars to buy more pamper chef or <laughs> use it for catalogs or whatever you want. And then you're also going to get the quick cooker. So you want to work to get that 12.50. If you um, don't, which that's not an option for you, just so you know that. <laughs> but if you would not happen to hit it, it just means you're not going to get that opportunity to get that quick cooker um, okay. for free. 
they're just, it's not. But now if you hit 1250 and it's, you know, 45 days in, you'll still get a hundred pamper check dollars every time you hit it. So if you hit 1250, 10 times, you're going to get a thousand dollars in pamper check money. So right. I always say when you're going to work your business, work your hardest, the first 90 days, work it harder than anything you've ever done. Cause you're going to set yourself up for major success. Okay. It's really worth it. Even if you have to go out of your comfort zone and ask everybody you don't want to ask. Right. <laughs> Trust um, me. So I would still qualify because I talked to Nikki today about it. And she's, um, she said after 30 days, I would not be like her recruit. So no, you would be. Okay. She's new at recruiting. So maybe she didn't realize that. So yeah, yeah, no, you would still be our recruit. We want you to get qualified in 90 days. Okay. Um, that's our goal. So that's what we want to obviously get you. But we, more, I try to make it that we get you qualified in 30 because I want you to get the bonus. It's stupid. Why would you miss a $200 product and a hundred pamper chip dollars? Right. Unless you have 250 bucks cash. That would be your commission for that 1250. Right. So to get you a paycheck for 250, a quick cooker for free and a hundred pamper chip dollars in 30 days, that's our goal. Definitely. So, what I'm going to do is I'll add you to my virtual parties I have going on and I'll add you to the ones from last week. Um, Samantha Rice, she was the one that I just closed up her party. She was my thousand dollar party. I'm going to add you to her party so that you can see what her show looked like and the interaction that I got and how I responded. And then I'll pick one of my lower ones so that you could just look at the differences in them um, okay. and see that it, it you know, you, you, you could do the same outline and have the same personality. And you can have a thousand dollars and you can have one that doesn't qualify. So it's not necessarily that, but if you have four parties that didn't qualify, well, we want to look at that and see, well, what can we do now to make your next four parties even better? Okay. And it, it could be related to your host. You know, it could be related to your host coaching because you're just getting started. Um, and then what I would also do is your next four that you start, did Nikki set any parties up for you or did you do all your posting? I did all my posting. Okay, so let me add you, because if you did all your posting, it means you're, you're techy enough to do all that, because not everybody's techy, believe me. <laughs> so you're techy enough. So if I add you to mine, you could feel free to steal ideas from mine, images, um, things like that. Just always change your wording, because otherwise they spam us. So okay. you could feel free to go through my outline and see what you like, or the company outline on marketing imagery that Connie talked about, and use one of their outlines too. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll add you to mine so you can see and then um, work on getting your bookings. And honestly, if you get your bookings, I really don't mind if you get those four bookings. I can even help you set up some of the posts and, you know, get you started a little bit more. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. Yeah, just reach out to me. Monday through Thursday, my head spins in 90 directions and I don't really sleep much, but um, usually I catch up on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I apologize. I'm not kidding you. All day long, I thought today was stinking Monday. <laughs> I really did. I don't know how the hell I did that. Because I was, I was all ready to go. I'm like, okay, I gotta set this post up for tomorrow. <laughs> That's and then Connie, okay. thank God Connie messaged me. She was my savior. I'm like, shit, it's Tuesday. I gotta take the trash out too. <laughs> so, okay. All right, girls. Well, I won't hold you up. And I gotta go grade papers and set up my virtuals and close two parties yet. So. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. I'll put the playback of this on. So then that way anybody else, or if anybody needs to see this, refer them to this. So then that way it's kind of not always constantly us repeating things. They can kind of get some tips maybe from this then later on. All right. Bye girls. Have a good night. Bye. You too.